That's right there. I like it. No, you don't. Poor little dude. Oh, okay. This one says solve each system graphically. I am going to show you today how to do this on the graphing calculator. asks you to solve this graphic. So what's, what should I do? Which one of these is kind of nicer? First one, because it's already in the right form. right? I can tell the two main things about it. So I can go ahead and plot this sucker. But what do I have to do with this one? Yeah, get a slope intercept form, which really translates into yeah, y by itself. All right, so take a minute to do that if you haven't already. So whoever asks this question, just sit there. paper go buy some if you're about as bad as I am at drawing lines and such right uh, you have now here real quick you, you have lined paper already it's not graphic but for example, a lot of you guys have the lined paper right and you don't use those lines to help you make scale that kind of drives me a little insane you already have lines there use them use them make a nice scale with them. or get graph paper even better um, so what do you know about this first one Where's you start? The first one. Oh, zero, zero, negative one. Yeah, it starts at negative one. So let me put some stuff in. There. Okay, that's so exciting every single time. So it starts at zero, negative one. And it goes down one, over three. So down one, over three. Down one, over three. So there's that guy. I could even go up one, back three. I like it. I'm still on that line. So there I am on that line. We A special place in my heart for my, you guys will love this phrase. I'm sure you've heard this phrase from my anal retentive students that use color pencils to kick so much ass. That would not be me. I would hate me if I was in my class somehow, clone me and I'm taking this class. I would hate me. I so suck. But um, if you want to use color pencils, it's awesome. So if you do this other one, where does it start at? Negative six. Zero, negative six. And it goes where? Up four, one, two, three, four, over three. Over three. So bam. Yeah. Cool. Why did I do the whole problem for you? I don't know. It just happened. Now, if you just do this and just go to the next problem, why are, are you not quite right? Point huh? intersects. Yeah, you didn't tell me the answer. I mean, you gave me the picture. That's your work to get the answer, but you haven't told me the answer yet. What's the answer? Three and then negative mutant number, negative two. So the answer would be three, negative two. That's the point where they meet. That's the point that should work in both. 
So then how would you check it? Well, you plug a 3 in and make sure that you actually get a negative 2 out. So you can actually check the work, the gas. I like it. What happened right here? They we're all sharing something. Somebody drank somebody else's. Okay. Spread something. All right. Anything else from homework stuff? Yes. Okay. Um, 30 on 3.8. Oh, good. All right. You. I love it. All right. Uh, we did an example. We did a couple examples of this kind of problem. Um, I already got this very colorful. So we put two examples up on the board of this idea. Uh, just a really quick little. Barely anything thing. So if I ask you, what is the domain of this function? What would you tell me? What axis are you looking at for the domain? Y. X axis. Domain is all the stuff you're allowed to plug in. We normally consider X to be the input. So what's the domain where you first see some output? Negative, negative two. two, where you last see the output? One, two. Two. I last see an output at two, right? You guys, not where it intersects the x-axis. Don't get me wrong. As you're walking along, I see an output here, and then I still see outputs all the way through, right? So the answer is going to be an interval because it's everything from negative two to two. I know you're like, that's not what mine looks like, but hold on. That's why I make an interval notation, because it includes everything between those two, right? And the range, of course, would be negative one to two. Okay, I know it sounds like kindergartners, but I like the idea of little dude walking on the axis, and you see, there he sees it, and that's the last time he sees it. That's how you figure out. You just walk along the right axis for the right thing, domain range. So what if I had a function look like this? The domain of that function. Same same scale. Uh. Yeah, there it is. Careful now. What what what? What x values work? Can you tell me uh, a, a, an interval of x values that all of them work? Can you tell me specifically what x values work? What well, not anything from no. Because does this work? Does this x value go anywhere? No. Does this one go somewhere? Where's it go? It's got nothing. Here, look. Why did I include all of these in my answer? Because every single one of them has an output, don't they? Because the dots are connected. Here, what are the only x values that have a dot, that have an output? Negative 2. Negative 1. One, two. two. So I have to list them and put them in these brackets. They're a set of values that actually have outputs. I can't just say everything from here to here. This is not true. They're not connected. They don't all go something. Only specific things go to something. So the range, what are the only y values? Negative one. Yeah, negative one, sure. Zero. Zero, I like it. One. And one is twice, so you just list it, put once. <coughs> Good column. Good job. So all the problems on that section that have just dots, they're not connected. The domain range is going to look like this. Because they're very specific. Why can I do this everything? Because it's connected. Therefore, everything in the middle actually has an output. Here I have to actually list individual values because they're just little points. They're not connected. So domain is always all the x values that actually have an output. So you can't answer that question like this, because then this should have an output, this should have an output, you have an output, you get a car. 
Alfred. All right. Is that cool? Anything else from? Oh, is that cool? Okay. The Oh, it's it's supposed to be okay. If I'm very careful, I can make it. It's that. Just when I make them, I get impatient. Which really is why I write as horrible as I do, just because I'm really impatient. Anything else from homework stuff? Is there uh, uh, an x value that goes has negative one as an output? Yes. Oh, here. Right here, negative one. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the lowest y value is negative one, the highest is two. Negative one to two. So let's kind of review what we did last time. I'm not feeling like getting in the green book right now, so we won't. So last time we did substitution method. Let's do a couple examples together real quick. Answer. All right, so let's think about this. So the, met, the instructions would say use substitution method. So I'm not going to graph these. Kind of happy because this is, they would both have, well, this would have kind of a gross y intercept. I wouldn't want to graph it anyway. What's that first equation tell you for sure? X. Yeah, you know what x is. You just do. You know what x is. It's 5 minus 2y. So I know some of you guys are like, you still don't know what the hell x is, Jeff. But it's a lot more information than just, here's x. I know that it is related to something else by this way. So how can I rewrite the second dude? I know this is true. I know x is this. So anywhere in this problem where I see an x, I could replace it with what it is. I could replace it with. Five minus two. I want this to really make sense. X is five minus two y in this problem. It says so right there. Therefore, I can rewrite the second one. What can I put right there instead? Zero. No. Yes. What's the first thing tell you? X is five minus two y. Isn't that what it says? So in the second one, there's two freaking letters. That sucks. So substitution method says there's a way around this. Take one piece of information, plug it in the other one. X is this, so let me replace X with this, because this is really saying the same thing. Twice X, because X is this. So I just rewrote the same equation, yay Jeff. But now, the way I've written it now, how many letters are there? How many variables? No, there's one. Why? You guys see what I'm saying? I know it's in a couple of places, I don't give a shit. How many letters are in there? One. There's a Y sprinkled around, but I'm going to get them together in a minute, aren't I? So go ahead and solve that for a while, real quick. I love this method. Not just because I love old B horror movies, it's related to Invasion of the Body Snatchers, right? Replace you. Bless 
mistake I see is people forget this guy when they replace this. They feel like they've written enough, but it's twice x minus 3y. I can't. It has to be there or else you're solving some other problem. This becomes really nice, right? Subtract 10, get these guys together, I get negative 7y equals negative 7, so y is 1. And the minute you know one letter, you can figure out the other letter really easy. Where, what do I want to do with this? Where do I want to put that? I'll tell you where to put it. Where do I want to put that? Which I can put it either equation I want to. Because then I can figure out what x is. But obviously I want to use that first equation because it's already solved for x. If you have time, it's a way to check your work. If you plug 1 into each one of them, you better get the same answer, of course, because it's supposed to be the same point. It's supposed to be that one point where they meet. So when I want to plug a 1 in here, I get x is 3. So what's the point? What's the answer? 3, 1. Cool. Now, if I would have, what's up? Is everybody all right? You guys all right? What's up? Some of you guys look in quizzically, but not asking any questions. Yes? For the negative 7 equals negative 7, I think told us not to divide, or is it okay in that? How do you mean? Sorry. Of course you divide. Okay. You have to. How do you get y by itself? Yeah, you divide. Divide by negative 7? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, the only way to get that last step. If I told you not to, I'm really sorry, because then I'm like... So we're not supposed to divide the... Okay, I'm talking about like uh, 4.1 lesson. I think you told us not to divide on those. When it, um, I'll just show you the problem after class. I think I think I wrote it down in my notes. I don't know. Okay. If I just wrote it all right. Okay. All right. Maybe. Okay. That'd be so evil if you could divide. You'd never get to the answer. <laughs> You're so frustrated. That's <laughs> like I can't get any answers. Because Jeff. Uh, now watch real quick. Just want to show you. If I were to plug that one in here. Because I know y is 1. I just do. I know that. So if I plug it in here instead, I get 2x minus 3 equals 3. Add 3, I get 2x is 6. Divide by 2, I get x is 3. I still get x is 3, right? Do you guys see what I'm saying? The answer is where the two lines meet. So it doesn't matter where you put that y value, because both lines are going to agree. That's the whole point. But that's why it's a way to check. If they do agree, you're like, oh, good, I got the right answer. Kick ass. Okay, maybe, maybe. You guys doing all right? No? I'm good, Jeff. Okay, Zach, thanks, man. That's one of us down. The weather. All right, you guys are so hopeful that nobody would come open the door. I know. I'm, I don't, I'm a math teacher. I don't take that personal. <laughs> I understand that. I like it when I come like 12 minutes late to a class and everybody's like, oh man, three more minutes, we could have left. Like, oh, I like you too. All right. <laughs> huh? It's all love. It's all love? Sure. There's all different ways to express love. All right. Let's try one more of these together. Yes? What section did you cover yesterday? Because I was like, yeah. No, no, no. We did 4 1. Yeah, that's basically it. And a little bit of 4 2. 4 2's got substitution. Is 4 2 just substitution? I'm tripping, tripping. Yeah, you're tripping, tripping. No, I got you. Yes, 4 2 is just substitution. So we actually did 4 1, 4 2. Today we're going to do 4 3 eventually. I want to, here, let me do this with you guys. Did you watch me when I made that problem up? Did you wonder how the shit I made it? Look at the answer. Isn't the answer pretty? If I just start barfing up here, 3x and y equals 7 and 4x minus 5y equals 2, the answer is going to be gross. It just almost always will be. Right? You have to be very careful about it. So how in the world do I develop a problem so I know the answer is going to come out nice? How do I do it? No. <laughs> I'm not. I just do this all the time. That's why it looks like I'm smart. That's the key to being smart. It's how to have a degree. Uh, watch this. You ready? Start with the answer. So somebody give me a number. 
Five. Now somebody give me a negative number. Nine. Negative nine? Sure. Alright, so let's say that's what I want the answer to be. So now watch what I'm going to I'm going to put 3x plus y, but what has to be here so that that's the answer? Negative 9. Come on now. What's x in our answer? What's x? 5. And what's y? Negative 9. Negative nine. So five. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 9 is? 5. 15 minus 9. <laughs> Sorry. I like the enthusiasm. So don't lose that. <laughs> No trick. I mean, you guys, that's all I did. So over there, I picked 3 1. I started with 3 1 in my head. And then I wrote those down. Right? So now let's make a second one. Let's make, uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's say negative 2x plus 3y. So what's got to go here now? What's this going to be? X is 5. So this is negative 10. Negative 9 times 3 is? Yeah, so I've got to put negative 37 there. Yummy. Okay. So it doesn't matter what the first two numbers are, just your equals? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. You could actually do it. I could put that and that and then figure this out. That actually makes it a little bit so you worse. you just put either two and then find out the last one. Yeah, I could, you know, you could imagine. You could just 4x minus y equals. Well, then plug the x in, plug the y in. You could, you could do that for any coefficients you want. Now in real life, that's not how these are made. These are made by observations. X and Y could be variables like, I always think about weather, like X means uh, the temperature, the, the density of the air, and Y means the, 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 the wind speed, whatever the shit. And you make observations, that's where the equations come from. But in this class, that's how I make an equation that has a nice answer. Now, my instructions here with you say use substitution method. What's wrong with this these systems compared to that one. Why was that one so easy? Yeah, one I already had one that was x equals or something, right? So what letter is easiest to solve for in either one of these? Yeah, this y, right? Anything else I try to solve for, I'm going to create fractions. So dear God, if the problem says use substitution method, pick the good letter to solve for. I see people try to solve for x, and they get all these fractions, and they just get lost in all this avalanche of fractions. They're like, you suck, Jeff. No, it's not me. That was your decision. Oh. All right. I was like, he said it was all right. So how, so how do I solve this for y? I just have to subtract 3x. So I get okay. I'm not really looking at this as a line right now. So I don't have to force that negative three x in front. You guys with me? So you have to solve this because you don't already know the answer. Say again. You just have to solve it. You know the answer. Of course, you got to solve it. Okay. I just want to show you how I make the problem. <laughs> so I have showed you this, and normally I would, but now we know what the answer is supposed to be. That's kind of nice. All right. So what do I do with this now? Look at Yeah. Take this. Put it in the other. If you put this back into where it came from, you're going to end up with something like 6 equals 6. You're going to end up with circular logic. Plug it back into itself. It's always true. So you always have to use one piece of information in the other one together. So how does this get rewritten now? It's going to be negative 2x plus, yeah, replace y with what we know it is. Gas. Now, what should the answer to this be if I solve this? Five. Five. Right now, I'm, I'm going to solve for x, right? So my x better come out to be five, or else we screwed up. I said we because we did this together. Don't time me in that, Ricky Bobby. What's that? Don't time me in that, Ricky Did you say Ricky Bobby? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> I said, I love crepes. What are crepes? We're real thin pancakes. They're delicious. Oh, all right. So how do I go from here? So I got, everybody knows how to do this. I'm going to power through this. What's negative 37 minus 18? That's 
That's right, 55. <laughs> and then when I divide by negative 11, I get? Five. Kick ass. All right, come on. And then how do I get y? I'll go back to this guy. y is 6 minus 3 times x, but now we know what x is. 6 minus 15 is negative 9. Big x. I like it. And then you can either circle both of them or you can write your answer as this point. The point's a little bit more correct, but I'm not going to take points off if you don't. Alright, uh, so here, you guys try this one. Then we'll get to the next four. So evil. Let me make this. Oh man, I'm so evil. Don't do it. I got so. No, no, no. I was evil. Let me become less evil. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Some of you guys should realize why I was a little too evil. Yeah, nothing was nice. So what about the Y? Now it is. Now it's right there on the second you didn't put a number back in. I totally didn't. Okay. Yeah. It's just. Negative 3x plus y. Uh, I don't want to do the intention of the accident. Because if I left the number in, you're going to get fractions. Now, I'm not saying you should not expect problems with fractions. You will have problems with fractions. Yes? You have to solve the first one to get the variable? No, no, no. That's the, good. I'm glad you said that. That's one reason why I wanted the second line to have it. You find whatever, in whichever equation, you find the, the variable that's easiest to solve for without making the result too ugly. So that y in the second one definitely, right? So it doesn't matter. In fact, why did I write them in that order? Does it really, would it change the answer if I change the order? No, no. Solve this for y. Get that, and then I can use this in there. Is that cool? Add the three x over, and then take that and replace y with it because that's what y is. really interesting for you because you've never thought about an equation in that way. This is a relationship between x and y. So I know y is this in terms of x. Why does this equation suck? There's an x and a y. If only I could replace that y with x shit. Oh, I can. And now there's only x in the whole thing. I can solve it. Yeah. So you get 5x minus 6x plus 10 equals 9. So you get negative x equals negative 1. Is that cool? So I get x is 1, which means y is negative 2. Jeff is 
being nice to himself. So that's when I made X and Y when I made those problems. I like it, so you can write the answer as Y. If you do write it as a point, make sure you get them in the right order. Okay, so let's talk about the other algebraic method, which is section 4.3. So this is substitution. This is very subversive. This is very sneaky, spy level shit, or aliens taking us over, whatever. <coughs> the other one is much more straightforward. You just kill shit. Right? It's called, I think, I can't remember this book calls it addition subtraction method or elimination method. You could look, Jeff. Oh, it does call it elimination. Some books just call it addition subtraction method. Substitution for three is elimination. What you got, Jeff? Sure. Mm. So this would be relatively easy to use substitution on. But we're going to learn elimination with this nice and easy one. So I can add the same thing to both sides of an equation, right? Anything, I could add any damn thing I want to to both sides of an equation and it still remains the same answer. I don't change it fundamentally. So that's the bottom line of what I'm about to do. If I add this to this, why would that be nice? I'm not even going to talk about why we're allowed to do that. But if I added this to this, what happens that's really nice? The y's cancel. Why am I allowed? So watch this. 5 plus 13 is 18. So what did I just add to both sides? I added 5 to this side, right? So I better add 5 to this side also. But what is 5? 5 is this. So if I add 5 to this side, I can add these to this side because that is 5. I am adding the same damn thing. That's why you're allowed to just add two equations together. That's why. But well, wouldn't you have to add the x as well? Of course. Okay. Yeah, so what do you get? 2x. Two 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 x. Two. Y is dot. Look at that. That's that kick so much out. Elimination, just very now it, it's harder to use elimination. Why was this so easy? Well, because there's ones and they're already opposite signs. That's easy shit. So what do you get here? X equals nine, and then you can plug it back into either one. So I plug it into this one, you get nine plus y is thirteen, so what's y? Let's try one that's not quite that nice. Let's take the next level up. There's a few levels. Let's do the next level up. Hold up a level. So if I have, let's see. So what's, I don't want to add these together. Why not? Does anything die if I add them together? The no. whole purpose of elimination is to eliminate one variable. And why is that good? Because the whole problem with either one of these is too many freaking variables. The number of variables. It's too damn high. What? Nothing. Right. So what do you wish was here, for example? Negative, Negative two. Negative two. So, and what did we just say you're allowed to do? You're allowed to multiply both sides of an equation by anything you want to, except here. So if I take the second equation and multiply it by negative 2, what do I get? Positive 6x 
minus 2y equals 0. And let me bring the first one down here. Now, does it make sense to add them together? Yes. Do you guys see that? So why was this nice? Because they already were opposite signs, same number. So if you have to use elimination method, you pick the one that's easiest to make the coefficients match opposite signs. So then when you add them together, they actually die. Yeah. So you just picked x minus 2, or like where did you pull that? No, so I'm multiplying by negative 2. Okay. Yeah, and why, why did I? If there's a positive 2y there, what's there to kill it? You want to uh, what do I want there to kill it? A negative 2y. So I multiply by the thing that makes that happen. So there's a lot of things going on at once that we all know are legal. We've just never had to do them like this. I would never, if I had that equation, there would be no reason for me to multiply it by negative 2, just sitting by itself. But now I see the reason, and I'm told, I could take any equation and multiply both sides by 11.784, if I just felt like it. Yeah, look at me. It's more than likely it's not going to do shit for me, but I could. So I can multiply both sides of this by negative 2. And why is that a good idea in this case? Because now these will cancel. So I add these together, I get... 11x equals 11. X is 1. Y is 1. You guys with me? What's happening? You guys all right? Again, I see a lot of this, but no. no. So how come we're adding them instead of subtracting them? I, I, the way I do elimination, I always add them. So Because when you subtract, you can make mistakes in your head about minus a negative and shit like that. Okay. So what do I always do? I always make sure that the, the number, the letter I want to kill, opposite signs. Okay. So when I add them, they do die. If I subtracted them, I get negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Oh, shit. They wouldn't die. I want them to die. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you can multiply anything for the both sides in order to get the number that you want to cross it out, right? Yeah, I'm going to do this problem again, but I'm going to see if we can figure out how to kill the x's. And it doesn't matter if you can do x or y, or it has to be y? You can do x or y. We're about to do that. We start off again and start with x. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and I'm not done, am I? No. Right? But if I plug a 1 in here, add 3 and get y equals 3. Okay, good. Now watch, now watch. Actually, let me make a different problem. I don't like that problem. I don't like that zero. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah. See what happened. Jeff did anything here. Oh, this one sucks. What method do you sure as all hell not want to use? Substitution. You'd make all these yummy fractions you have to work with. I'm not saying you couldn't if you had to, but my God, I wouldn't even choose to do that if I had a choice. There's no way in hell. Now the next level thing is you start to see how like like pick a letter for us to kill. X. 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 <laughs> Yes, we'll come in. <clears throat> Notice how the, the thought process here is the same as LCD. What number can I make both of these become? 20. 20. And notice how the, the thing that both of these have going for them is they're both already opposite signs. So if you have a choice, you pick the letters already opposite signs. Because anytime you bring a negative in yourself, that's a place you can make a mistake. So if they're already opposite signs, kick ass. So what do I multiply the first one by? Good? So let's see what we get. 20x. Work with it. There you go. Yeah, if you want to, you can put a little 5 next to everybody. So minus 15y equals... Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I check your work, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> so nice. And of course, I want to multiply him by what? Four. Four. So that they both end up being a type of 20. This is negative 20. I like it. And again, you can put the four next to each of these if you want to. Whatever's going to keep you straight, right? The biggest mistake is people don't multiply the whole thing by whatever. Everything's got to change. Right? You multiply both sides of the equation by four. So this becomes 28. Why? Four times 20 is... Four times 20 is 80. Four times four is 80 and 16 is 90 freaking six. Okay, let's all get over that shit. <laughs> right, break it down and do it. Uh, come on. I'm sorry. So what happens there, these of course do what we've designed them to do. They kill each other in combat. They're dead. What happens here? 13y, 26, kick ass, kick ass, Jeff, this is a good problem. Sorry, I was really curious. I did that right in my head. So y equals 2, and now you just pick whichever one. The one thing that substitution method has over this is it's going to have an equation sitting there ready for you, solve for the other letter. But to me, I always like this one better. So where do you want to put 2? First one, yeah. and then I get 4x minus 3 times 2, because y is 2, equals negative 14. 4x minus 6 equals negative 14. Add 6, 4x is negative 8. Divide by 4, again, x is negative 2. And that's what the answer, the answer that I made. Just think place the way it came out. Okay, you didn't do it, yes? Okay. Question, would these ever be associated with word problems? Yes. <laughs> Not just because you have, I mean, they are going to be. Let me, let me, all right, let me give you a little taste of what a word problem is going to be. These word problems are going to be much better than the other ones. They're going to be a little more rigid. Now watch what I mean. So if I said, if I buy five pencils and four erasers, and that costs, do you guys see that? Yeah. Five pencils and four erasers, I don't have a freaking clue. Uh, let's just make something up, Jeff. Say it costs seven bucks. No, there's, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I have no idea how much it costs. Uh, and then, but if instead I had bought uh, two pencils and six erasers, because I know I'm going to be like making mistakes all over the damn place. That would cost what, Jeff? I don't know, man. Five bucks. So then the question is, how much does every pencil and every eraser cost individually? You guys see that? That's basically how a lot of the word problems. Not all. Don't get overly excited. Most of them will set up. I like to do like you buy six hot dogs and seven cokes and it costs this much. How much did each one cost separately? Well, you just look at the receipt. Hey, get a receipt. Gosh, look at the sign. They took it down. Gosh. Uh, so this one I, I I like a lot. It doesn't almost matter which letter I pick. They both have the same kind of level of difficulty. But which letter do you want to kill? P. P. They involve like smaller. Relatively smaller numbers, I guess. What's the... So again, the LCD idea is always there. But what's the thing I have to be careful about? They have to end up... Canceling. So they have to end up opposite signs. It doesn't matter which one you multiply by negative. You gotta buy, don't multiply both of them by negative. Because again, then they don't kill each other. So I'm going to leave the first one positive. I'm just going to multiply by what? Two. So then I get... Then P, 8E equals 14. And then the second one, I got to multiply by <coughs> negative 5. Negative. 
So then I get negative 10 d minus 30 d equals negative 25. The gas. Okay, I like it. So then these die like we designed. This is negative 22. And this is negative 11. I like it. Answer ain't two. Don't be giving me that shit. How do you get the answer? You have to. E equals positive one half, otherwise known as 50 cents, right? One half a dollar, otherwise known as 50 cents. All right, so the racers are 50 cents each. All right. Does that sound about right? No? You guys bought the racers? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> and then how do you get the pencils? I just have to pick an equation. Let's just pick the first one. Five pencils and four of these equals seven. See, that's nice. Half of four is two. Subtract two, so each pencil is a buck. So each eraser is 50 cents. Each pencil is a buck. Kick ass. Uh, I would have found that receipt. Say what? You would have found the receipt? Yeah. All right. I don't blame you. It is, uh, I want you to remember that what's the basic idea behind solving systems of equations? I want to see where two things possibly meet. One application is, of course, protecting yourself from other countries, throwing missiles at you, right? I love that picture of this, like, <laughs> throwing a missile at me, right? Uh, but it also could be uh, uh, the trajectory of the Earth versus the trajectory of some asteroid, and then we have to see if we have to send up some old dudes to go up there and blow it up or whatever, right? Bruce Willis, no. I don't do it. Okay. So, I want to do a little bit, this is perfect. I want to do like a little bit of chapter 9, and then let us out of here. Dude, keep up. Look at your homework sheet. Chapter, we decided to uh, take chapter 9 and do it immediately after 4. Because what 9 does is this. 9 does... What, erase 4? Shut up. What 9 does... Is it says, what if I had an equation that looked like... Yes. Yeah. So how many more equations do you need to be able to possibly solve this? I need three total. Why do I need three total equations? Because there's how many things I don't know? Three things. If there's three things I don't know, I need three pieces of information. Because what we just come from, two things we didn't know, and we were given two pieces of information. It. Well, some of you guys enjoy this so much. All right. So I'd have to give, uh, let me think. Okay. And then let's do one more. Okay, I think that should work. Oh, shit. So here's what happens. This is where something called math stamina comes into play. Because the process almost never changes. There's only there's gonna be some little weird places where it's gonna change a little bit. But once you see the process, it's almost always the same. So what, what trips people up is they kind of give up part of the way through. How you doing? All right. All right, so why is this worse than the ones we were doing before? Obviously because three variables and three freaking equations. How could I do something here to make it look more like this? I have to kill a letter. Bless you. 
So right now, if I added the first two equations, what would happen? It is equation one plus equation two. The x's would die, right? So then I would have an equation that has just what in it? Y and z. Yeah, let's focus. So if I let's see what we get. If I add one and two, what do I get? I get I'm gonna no watch this is where you're gonna you're gonna love this. I get equation four, right? Because how many equations up there right now? Three. Three. So if I make another equation, I'm gonna call it equation four. So what do you get? You get zero, you get three y plus three z equals nine. That looks nice. Now I could do this method <coughs> if I just had one more freaking equation with only y and z in it. So how do I accomplish that? Well, I kill x one more time some other way than this. Then I'm going to have another equation with just y and z in it. So if I kill the same letter twice, I'm back to this kind of stuff. Do you guys see that? So I pick a letter. Did it have to be x? No, I could have killed z, y. They all pretty much are the same level of difficulty to kill here, right? We just picked X this So I kill X once, now I'm going to go back and kill it again. I can't use the same combo, so what's another easy way to kill X? I think somebody almost had it, but you're killing Y instead. But why is it a little better to do 2 and 3 instead of 1 and 3? Because 2 already has opposite sign. I like it. See? So what do you have to multiply 2 by so it's going to kill this? 2. So with systems of three equations, I pick a letter and kill it twice. And then I end up with a problem like this. So if I take the second one and multiply it by negative 2, or well, green, I'm going to get negative 2x plus 2y plus 4z equals 6. Is that cool? That's just doubling. Oh, I'm supposed to do negative 2. No, I'm not. Yeah, they're negative 2. Sorry. So now if I take two 